This incident happened around 2 o'clock this morning when most people were sleeping. Hundreds of rescue workers have been going through the rubble. And some family members, desperate for more information on their loved ones, are still waiting. Surveillance cameras nearby captured the chilling moments. The building pancaked as people were asleep in their homes. Search and rescue efforts continue at this hour, 10 hours after the first calls for help. Police tonight saying 99 people are unaccounted for. And as search and rescue efforts continuing, now into day four, Israel sending an elite team of specialists to go and help out. A 10-person team, including Home Front Command reservists and representatives from the Foreign Ministry, heading off to Florida late Saturday night. When I heard of the collapse, I was thinking, we can help. We specialize in building destructions. We call ourselves ISR1. Our main objective is to give assistance and to save life inside Israel. We took part in more than 30 overseas operations, from earthquakes to floods, hurricanes, fires, COVID, warfare, engineering failures, terror attacks, and we saved many lives. We saw that we can support the American teams by providing them our methodology. We have in Home Front Command Intelligence Center that provided us technology support, which included 3D models. Those models enables us to know exactly where are we standing, to find some anchors. From the moment that the Israeli army showed up to assist, you could just tell that uh, the professionalism, their work ethic. As soon as they arrived, we attached them to our teams and they worked as one. And you could just tell that these individuals were in the right place. More importantly for ourselves, they reaffirmed with the families that everything possible that could be done for the families were being done. At first we questioned all the families. It took us 30 hours to question each and one of the family members in order to provide us the right intelligence so we can point and we can put the exact location of each and one of their loved ones inside the apartment. Israelis came in and said, okay, this is how the building fell. This is where the apartments are. This is how we should look for the bedrooms. I drew out, you know, where were the bedrooms? Where was the furniture? What kind of furniture? And they made me feel included and they helped guide me, right? Asking the right questions. And I think that really made a difference in how the search went. People need to be part of the rescue efforts. Like I'm a mother and I was just thinking about me in the same situation. And the moment that I realized that, we are doing it together. The day we declared that we are moving from search and rescue to search and recovery, which means that there is no chance to find uh, lives under the rebels. It was a very, very uh, hard moment, the pain in the air. It's something I never experienced in my life. You see the families after two, three, four days, you get related and you hug them and you know that they will not find their loved one alive or you remember what was the conditions, the situation of the relative that you have just extracted from the rubbles two, three hours ago. So for me, it was challenging, it was difficult, and it was unique. It was the first mission that I deal this combination between live and dead people. Day after day, we pulled between 10 to 20 bodies out of the site. I exposed a few bodies and you started to expose part of the body and suddenly it, it hits you because you understand that this man, woman, child, they just went to sleep and you go to sleep and you don't imagine you won't wake up. It was a deeply emotional ceremony tonight filled with applause and gratitude as the Israeli crews prepare to leave and family members had a chance to thank first responders face to face. So we decided to say goodbye from the pile very personally. The other teams heard 
that we are planning to leave and they prepared for us a ceremony. It was very exciting, touching, embarrassing. They were standing about four or five hundred and said thank you for coming, for being with them, for finding people. It was an honor for us to stand among those American teams to be part of them, to get this respect. We refer to each other as brothers and sisters. I'm glad I got to meet the individuals, glad that they did come, and even happier the fact that I made friends. Since the incident, we are in close relations with the families. They feel that we are the last link for their loved ones. We feel the same that we had the opportunity as IDF, as the representative of Israel, to take part in this operation. I'm thankful for the Israeli team for having come, for never giving up, not giving up on our family members and the victims, but not giving up on us, you know, the surviving people. And it's just so meaningful to know that they're there, not because they have to be there. They're there because they want to be there. They included me like I was one of their family and they're one of mine and they always will be. We cherish life from this deep core of values, we find the efforts, we find the resources, we find the power to save people all around, overseas. No matter who you are, you're a Christian, you're a Muslim, you're a Jewish, you're a Buddhist, we will get to you and we will find you and we will save you because we cherish life.